Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you. So in this video, let us discuss about echinoderms and forms of echinodermata larva. So firstly, I'm going to give you the small introduction on this echinoderms and later I'm going to explain you the types of this echinodermata larva. So coming to the introduction of this echinoderms. This echinoderms are unisexual animals. So what is meant by unisexual and bisexual? Unisexual is nothing but the sexes are not separate. Either it may be male or female, but both male and female will not be present in this type of species. But if you see in the case of human beings, they exhibit bisexual form. That's nothing but the sexes are separate in the form of male as well as the female, right? So that's the differences between male, sorry, the unisexual as well as the bisexual. So these echinoderms exhibit unisexual anim the unisexual characteristic. So these are called as unisexual animals. The sexes are not separate. They may be either in the male form or as in the female form. That's nothing but the unisexual. And the sexual dimorphism is absent. So what is meant by sexual dimorphism? Sexual dimorphism is a phenomenon such a way. For example, if you take a species, if you take a species of, uh, in the same way, if you take the species of human beings, Homo sapiens, then uh, here the sexes are separate, which I have said you that is nothing but the male as well as the female. And the sex organs are also the different, right? Are also different, which exhibits different type of characteristics, right? And that uh, you know that phenomenon is called a sexual dimorphism. Dimorphism. The sexes are two types, male as well as the female, and the sex organs also two. Uh, whereas if you see in the case of males different type of sex organs will be present even compared to the females in this in this in that is called as sexual dimorphism the characteristic the characteristic which will be exhibited by that appropriate sex organ is known as sexual dimorphism and whereas if you see in the case of this echinoderms the sexual dimorphism is absent why it is absent because they are unisexual animals either it may be present in the male form or female forms right hence it is called as unisexual animals Hence, this dim sexual dimorphism is absent in this unisexual animals of echinoderms. And the development may be either direct or indirect. And once if this development of these echinoderms are indirect in form, then they exhibit the larval stages. When it exhibits these larval stages, then that phenomena is called as metamorphosis. So what is mean by metamorphosis? This metamorphosis is a phenomena from which it, the life cycle will get started from the egg and from the egg to the larva. First larva stage will be exhibited and the second larva stage will be exhibited and finally it forms the adult and from the adult it comes into mature form in such a way that it lay eggs and again the total life cycle will get repeated and that life cycle is called as metamorphosis and the deep explanation on this metamorphosis has already given and the link of that video will be given in the description box. So if you firstly watch that video of this metamorphosis then you can easily understand these types of the larva of this echinodermatal larva. Okay, so this radial symmetry, the radial symmetrical adult will be finally developed after this metamorphosis process in this echinoderms. Okay, so now let us learn about the types of echinodermatal larva. So totally there will be six forms of echinodermatal larva. Coming to the first one, bipinnaria larva. Second one, brachiolaria larva. Third one, auricularia larva. Fourth one is ophiopleutus larva. Fifth one is echinoplutus larva and the sixth one is doliolaria larva. So these are the six types of larva of this echinodermata. So firstly let us discuss about bipinaria larva. And this bipinaria larva will be emerged from the life history of the starfish. So once if you study the life history of the starfish then you can understand why this point has been erased here. Why starfish has been erased here. And now also you can understand by seeing the diagram. And now I am going to show you the diagram of this of this explanation after this explanation so that you can easily understand why this starfish life, life history has been erased here okay so normally the after the egg after the you know hatching of the egg that larva will be erased right and that larva uh, indicates that there is a presence of the bipinaria larva which has been erased from that appropriate egg and that you know the structure of that larva will be same similar to this type of starfish so why this starfish has been involved you can know in the diagram so i am going to explain you it later after this explanation i mean and the fertilized egg is homolecithal homolecithal means what Homolecithal is nothing but the uniform distribution of the yolk in the egg. So normally egg consists of yolk where everyone knows that. But in some cases the eggs consists of only small amount of the yolk. But if you see in this case of fertilized egg in this case of echinodermata the eggs are fertilized you know purely fertilized which is called as homolecithal form in such a way that the yolk will be present uniformly. It is distributed uniformly throughout the egg. Okay. Hence it is called as homolecithal. And 
This bipinnaria larva will exhibit hoblastic cleavage and forms blastula form and glasurella form. So that's something about blastula larvae and glasula larvae. So this glasula larvae undergoes certain development in such a way that the length of this, you know, the length of the larva will get increased in such a way that it finally forms the bipinnaria larva. So finally, the bipinnaria larva will be erased from the egg in such a way that the development occurs from the gastrula larva. Okay, so by this you can understand that the before the bipinnaria larva, gastrula larva has been present. But we will not consider this gastrula larva because uh, because the pro uh, proper theory has been not been erased from for this gastrula larva because uh, you know the arms are has been not been erased and because it is a small just a small form from which the bipinnaria larva will be erased. Okay, so from this gastrula larva, finally the bipinnaria larva will be erased by the development process which has been formed from by the hoblastic cleavage. Okay, so now this bipinnaria larva which has been formed will exhibit free swimming, free swimming process. That's nothing but it can swim throughout whole the sea. Okay, and the, it consists of pre-oral region and post-oral region. And here the pre-oral region is elongated and the post-oral region is broad. So now I'm going to show you the diagram. So once if I show you the diagram, then you can understand why how it is elongated and why it is broad. So this is the diagram of bipinnaria larva. So what I have said you, so if you see this case of diagram, what I have said you is that pre-oral region will be elongated and post-oral region will be broad. So pre-oral region is nothing but this one. If you see this are elongated these are the pre-oral region which are elongated so coming to the post ear post oral region these are broad you know these are broad like this you know the differences between elongation and broad you know you know the differences right and here the pre-oral region is elongated elongated and here the post oral region is broad so you know that by this by seeing the diagram you can understand half of this explanation okay and this is known as dorsal median arm and this is dorsal lateral arm and this is the mouth from which the ingestion of the food occurs and this is the posterior dorsal arm and this is the posterior lateral arm and this is the anus from which the excretory material will be uh, sent out from its body and this is the stomach where the digestion occurs so here uh, all of these arms plays a major role in the swimming process okay in the swimming process so uh, as this bipinnaria larva exhibit the free swimming uh, characteristic right hence this arm play uh, all of these arms plays a major role in the swimming process and this is about the this is the diagram of the bipinnaria larva if you take a screenshot then it will be good thank you so now uh, let us uh, learn some of the points and here the digestive system is developed with the mouth and anus right as i have shown you in the diagram mouth and anus so here the digestive system is developed with the mouth and anus and it resembles the structure similar to the tornaria larva so you know uh, so at uh, this tornaria larva will be explained in some other video it is not related to this so it is but just it resembles the structure of the tornaria larva and this larva slowly grow into next larval form and that larval form is called as brochilaria larva so now let us learn about this this brochilaria larva exhibits bilateral symmetry phenomena hence they are called as bilaterally symmetrical larva and their pelagic form of larva so what is mean by this pelagic it is a phenomenon in such a way that they will get you know this has a, it is it is a form of characteristic in such a way that this brochilaria larva exhibits this pelagic form what is mean by pelagic is nothing but it will get dispersed from a large distances for example uh, it, this will live in a habitat right and if that habitat has overcrowd then this brochilaria larva has a capacity to escape from that overcrowd of that habitat you know that uh, this this phenomenon is called as pelagic you know it has capacity to get uh, move away from this overcrowd habitat that's nothing but the pelagic form of larva okay and it consists of three brochilaria arms with suckers so i am sure i am going to show you the diagram so that you can easily understand and it consists of three brochilaria arms and one will be present at the median and another will be present at the lateral region okay and adhesive disc will be present what is this adhesive disc it plays a major role for the attachment attachment at the particular place so i am going to explain how this attachment occurs and from where this attachment occurs i am going to explain you and what is the main function of this adhesive disc is nothing but it mainly helps in the attachment of the body to a particular uh, particular thing so what is that i'm going to explain you it later of that after the uh, coming to the end of this brochilaria larva explanation and this adhesive disc is present above the brochilaria arms and it will be not present exactly above the brochilaria arms as uh, as given in the books i have mentioned here the above the brochilaria arms but if you see the diagram properly this uh, adhesive disc is not present above the brochilaria arms it is present just apart from this brochilaria arms it will get attached towards this brochilaria arms okay 
and the arms are very long which and the main function of this arms are swimming that's nothing but which i have shown you in the bipinnaria larva and here all of the the structure of this brocal larva will be similar to that of bipinnaria larva only so now let us see the diagram of this brocal larva so that you can understand the whole explanation so this is the brocalaria larva diagram so what i have said you there will be three brocalar arms right so these are the three brocalar arms one two three so i have said you that uh, this other so disc is present above the brocalar arms right but it will be not be present at the brocalar arms but it will get attached towards the brocalar arms so this total this whole region is known as adhesive disc or adhesive arm so what is the main function of this adhesive arm it mainly helps in the attachment of this body to a particular thing so why it gets attached i'm going to explain you it the later so this is about the adhesive disc and adhesive arm and this is a pre oral arm which i have said you uh, this structure will be resembled totally with this bipinnaria larva you know it will it is similar to this of bipinnaria larva right and here also pre oral arm will be present and here the post oral oral arm will be present and here the presence of mouth and here the stomach intestine and anus will be present where the mouth plays a major role in the ingestion of the food stomach plays a major role in the digestion and intestine also and here the anus mainly helps in the excretion of the waste material which is present in its body so this is about the structure of the brachiolar larva so here some other points has been mentioned digestive digestive system is completely developed in such a way that it will it is developed into a stomach and intestine which i have said you but if you see in the case of bipinnaria larva intestine is not present only stomach is present remember that one okay here the stomach and intestine both are present that's nothing but it has been matured because from the bipinnaria larva brocalar larva has been erased right you know some of the maturation process has been taken place there so when it gets totally matured then this uh, intestine will also be developed like that after swimming they get settled on a solid object with the help of the adhesive disc so now you can understand the major function of this adhesive disc so why does adhesive disc plays a major form in the major role in this attachment process because once it gets attached when this brocalar larva will get attached with the help of this adhesive disc to a solid object then what happens here let us see then what happens when it gets attached to that object immediately the larva will get enlarged you know the larva which is which larva that's nothing but the brocalar larva will get enlarged and will get developed into adult and then it will enter into the next stage known as auricularia larva so by this you can understand that this adhesive disc plays a major role in the attachment process why it, why it plays a major role because it plays a major role for the enter for entering into the next stage to say simply it mainly helps to into entering into the next stage called as auricularia larva so now let us learn about the auricularia larva this auricular larva are free swimming this larva exhibit the characteristic of free swimming and this is also called as pelagic larva so what is mean by pelagic which, which i already said you previously in this brocalar larva so what is mean by this pelagic pelagic is nothing but they can they has a capacity to move away from this crowded habitat okay and these arms are absent which arms the brocalar arms which i have said you all of these arms will be absent so again i'm going to show you the diagram of this auricular larva so that you can easily understand about this uh, you know about this characteristics arms are absent and elementary canal is developed elementary canal is nothing but it will get started with the mouth and it gets ended towards the anus okay and the intestine is curved okay intestine is curved and the length uh, normally if you see in some other regions like japan and bermuda the length ranges up to 15 mm but if you see but actual length is up to 1 mm only okay so because because the environment of this japan and bermuda is totally different when compared to other countries so the actual length of this auricular larva is only 1 mm but uh, the length when where they are present in the japan and bermuda it the length ranges up to 15 mm okay and the ciliated bands are well developed so now let us see the diagram of this auricular larva so if you see in this diagram of the auricular larva what i have said you the arms are absent right so you cannot find any arm here arms are absent so i have didn't mentioned any of the name here i didn't labeled any name right so this arms are absent and elementary canal is well developed that something but it will get uh, erased from the mouth and ends towards the anus this is the mouth and this is the anus so between this mouth and anus what will be present this pharynx will be present hydrocele will be present stomach intestine endometriosis each endometriosis is not present okay it is just uh, present around the intestine it is just surrounded towards the intestine but you know about the elementary canal for example if you see in the case of human beings elementary canal will be present which will be erased from the mouth and ends towards the anus between this mouth and anus what will be present many many parts will be present like pharynx uh, you know nasal cam nasal chamber pharynx stomach intestine each and every each and every part will be present up to the anus in the human beings in the same way here also in this auricular larva also elementary canal is 
quite well developed that's nothing but it will be started from the mouth and ends towards the anus and remaining all of the parts will be present in middle of this mouth and anus okay so this is about the auricular larva and he in this video i'm going to explain you only these three and in the next video let us continue about the remaining three larva that's nothing but of eplotilus larva and echinoplotus larva and dolial larva all of this all of these three larva i'm going to explain in the next video because this length of the video has been already extended a lot so thank you for watching this video guys if you like this video just do like and subscribe and if you have any doubts regarding this video please comment in the comment box i'm going to clarify doubts immediately thank you